In the final tutorial, I will cover 13 level design tips from The Sacrifice. Sacrifice is a downloadable campaign that you can download for free for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. The following tips are not necessarily reflecting what the level designers at Valve were thinking or doing as they were designing these. These are based on my own insight and experiences I was playing through the campaign. Let's begin! The first one is spawn the player facing the direction they need to go in. You'll notice that when you spawn outside in the very first map, the player begins to face the direction they need to go. This way there's no confusion what the player needs to be doing as soon as they start. Next is tell a story with your environment. Your environment needs to reflect of what has happened in that environment. Let the player figure out and start piecing together a story of what could have happened before the players got here. You want to introduce various elements that uh, kind of bring the environment together. Uh, for example, you have uh, a boat in the water that uh, something could have happened to, uh, the bridge that's been broken down. Uh, everything kind of points to a possible situation that happened in the past and uh, you want to let the player to kind of start piecing that together as they are looking around your environment. This helps to bring more authenticity to your environment and make it more real. Next is new prop fuel barrel entity. This introduces a new prop an explorable barrel that you can place inside the level and it explodes upon impact. Offer options which way the player can go. You want to provide an illusion of freedom by giving the player a choice. Here we have a side building and we have stairs leading to the side alley. By giving the player a choice which way they want to go if they want to explore inside the interior of the building or they just simply want to go to the side alley. Here's another. We have a building which the player can go inside and explore or the side alley. Both lead to the same location but by giving that option you can give the player an illusion of freedom within your environment to explore. You can also place items inside the building, uh, you can spawn infected inside the building, or you can uh, you give the the player a choice, they can avoid all that and just go the straight route by the side alley. Here's another example. You can go inside the building explore, get a few items, and you notice that both or actually all three of these examples they give you the same way to reach the location so they don't really deviate too far from the main course but uh, by giving you a, a little side quest go inside the building offers more of participation within the environment. Create tight narrow spaces such as alleyways or hallways. Valve calls these narrow flow and these offer for you to break up the flow and the pacing of your environment by uh, having the players engaged and infected and they have to fight them within these spaces. These create just intense situations that you can create within your environment. Create side rooms to spawn items and horde of infected. These are simple side rooms along the main path of your environment, and these offer for players to go into and collect items, collect weapons, as well as you can spawn infected from these uh, from these areas uh, and when you create a panic event. You can also do the same thing by using cargo containers as you see in the sacrifice. Allow the player to explore your environment. Uh, we covered this a bit when we talked about giving the player a choice. Uh, this takes uh, the idea a bit further. Uh, you want the player to uh, participate within your environment. Yeah, you don't want the player to go from point A to point B and you know achieve you know the path and uh, finish the level. You want them to go inside your environment. You want them to go inside the rooms, go up the stairs, go down the stairs. By introducing obstacles along the way and blocking off certain paths. Uh, you make the player uh, navigate through your environment, uh, giving them a choice of where to go, as well as they explore your environment. So it becomes more of interactive experience. Uh, here in this building, uh, you're given the choice to go inside one room or through another window into the second room. Both lead to the same place, 
so they don't really deviate too far from the main path of achieving the completion of the level but uh, by giving that interactive and exploration uh, path to the environment uh, kind of gives you more of interactivity so here's another example uh, you can have the player go inside the building or go up the roof and this is a great way to introduce uh, you know break up the pacing a little bit so give the player a bit of uh, what uh, Valve calls fish in a barrel where you're able to pick out the infected from the top of the roof uh, important thing here you notice is the infected do enable climb up the, the AC vents and the ladders to get you so you don't want the player to be completely sealed off from the infected you want the infected be able to climb up in a realistic way so here you're able to see the pipes where the infected are able to climb up another way is to foreshadow or backshadow the locations uh, meaning that the player can see where they will be going and where they have been new support has been added for forced walking this introduces a forced way to make the player walk so here in this example when you are climbing up the hill in order to get to the ship the player is forced to walk up the hill this gives uh, a new way to introduce uh, intense situations and uh, create and design new environments based on this new addition. Water is another way to force the player to walk. Water is able to introduce higher visual quality to your environment and you can break up the pacing by having the player cross uh, a body of water which slows them down and uh, increases the intensity uh, of your scenario of your environment. Uh, you can have the player be forced to cross a specific stream of water, body of water, or you can just include it within your environment for the visual quality of your map. Jockey. Trap players for panic events. This is when you want to introduce a panic event or some kind of a scenario where you want the player to fight through instead of avoiding it or running away from it. Uh, Valve does this a lot when they uh, do finales they trap the player within a certain location by making them drop down and they have to get through an exit point or they have to wait for a vehicle so here's a scenario where you are dropped down into an area which you cannot escape and by opening the door you have to fight and then you have to open another door so there's no way to escape unless you fight through the infected and the tank and then you get, uh, then you get to advance guide the player with using light flares, safe house overlays and warm lighting. You'll notice this a lot in the sacrifice that the light flares are placed throughout the level to help the player guide to their next location. Another way to do so is by introducing a consistent reinforcement that the player going the right way with uh, the safe house overlay. also making the player navigate towards light uh, and specific to warm lighting such as the sun or when you use an interior shots uh, you have cool lighting and warm lighting and the player will tend to navigate towards the warm lighting as opposed to the cool lighting pay attention to detail as you design your environments you don't want to detail every section of your map but you want to detail important locations here in the beginning there's a lot of movement and detail within this environment. There's fire, there's smoke, uh, the flag is waving, there are birds flying up above. Uh, here you get to see the wire, uh, the electric wire being connected to the light and that's how the light is receiving the electricity. And here you get to see the water droplets on the floor uh, with the puddle. And the last tip is sacrifice. You can begin design and plan your environments with in mind that a player will have to sacrifice themselves in order for you to achieve the finish and end of the level. So here at the very last level the player has to start three generators and then uh, an event starts where they have to get up the bridge and will eventually will have to sacrifice one of the players in order for you to finish the level. You'll also notice that uh, a minigun has been added in Left 4 Dead 2. So here by sacrificing the player uh, you can begin to design your finale environments with that in mind 
and that gives you more power to of how you will design the environments around that idea of sacrificing the player. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot of ideas and ways you can improve and design better environments.